This might get weird. Buckle up, buttercups. <laughs> Sorry, I got really excited. Grace here uh, of Mamrie and Grace of the podcast that you're listening to. This might get weird. Guess what, you guys? We're going on tour. Yeah, Mamrie and I, fall tour 2021, the Are We Rolling tour. It's very exciting. Mamrie and I cannot wait. These are live comedy shows with a little bit of podcast sprinkled in, but you can expect lols um, and other activities. <laughs> I haven't thought this through, but I wanted to remind you that tickets are on sale now. 915, we're going to Portland. 916, Seattle. 917, Denver. 924, Minneapolis. 925, Chicago. 926, Detroit. 10-9, Austin. 10-10, Houston. 10-13, Charlotte. 11-10, Nashville. 11-11, Cincinnati. Get your tickets now go to this make it weird.com uh, all the ticket links are there or you can look at Mamrie and I's socials we should maybe hopefully have some links to ticket purchase options there go 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 we can't wait to see you guys and we're gonna make it safe don't worry are we rolling we're rolling well then cheers grace helvin cheers Mamrie heart oh my word coming mm-hmm. at you looking real rough yeah, you are. Well, wow, one, she agreed. She agreed. No, no, no. no. I didn't finish my <laughs> sentence. I, I was looking at the uh, like sheer curtains behind you because okay. it's a very curious look. It feels very ghostly, almost. Girl, okay. First of all, we're gonna get to that. Okay. But I want to say that it is. Just shy of five, and I am <clears throat> starting a gin and tonic because Ooh. it is raining so uh-huh. much here, it's blowing my mind. Like, coming from LA, first mm. of all, it's rained every single day I've been here, not all oh. days, but every single day. And, like, I know that where, like, where I taught summer camp up here, like, there's pockets of North Carolina that technically, with their precipitation levels, are considered rainforest. Wow. Oh, isn't cool. that crazy? Yeah, that's but, wild. But it has just been fucking dumping and like in my head i'm like i want to go hiking i want to go do this i'm gonna and i'm just like no i'm gonna have a gin and tonic at 4 30 and i guess Mm -hmm. i'll binge white lotus like yeah i could do this anywhere true so anyway so cheers to that i see you have a red bull i have a red bull um because it's you know just before two here and i have have a three o'clock i have a, a three huh a hard out on caffeine at three. A hard out on caffeine at three. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm flirting with 2.30 because three is pushing it for me. Um, mm. But I'm still in the middle of paper writing and project doing. So hence I'm Red seriously, Bull drinking. You have so much to do all like with this school stuff. I'm honestly honored you fit me in. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's I to be honest, I need this for grounding okay. my mental health right now because yes. I have uh I told you last week, Elliot and I have been sick. Uh last week yes. we started to get sick and so we obviously had the panic that oh god, we got Delta. We mm-hmm. both took two different COVID tests. They both came back for both of us, non detected. And the more we talked to people, the more we found out that every, a lot of people are getting just like head colds, like 10 day head colds. And I'm still congested right now. So it was an added, um, you know, impetus to just work on my work. But mm-hmm. that said, I've just been in like a congestion cloud of writing papers that I'm like, ooh, I'm becoming a little disconnected from reality right now. <laughs> so yep. let me talk to Mamrie about like frogs and get back to the good stuff. Is, <laughs> is the head cold? Is it because California's on fire? <laughs> It's so dusty and yeah. um, like the air quality you can tell is like tan- like tangibly bad right now. You just, you're eating campfire. Yeah, basically like you go outside and then you come in and you just feel like you've got, you know, a residue on you. You just, you just come in and you're a constant <clears throat> 1800s chimney sweep. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That <laughs> I, can't, Hello, I can't tell my own dandruff <laughs> from whatever pollen I'm collecting outside. You're like, uh, I thought I was tan. Yeah, nope. No, not at all. Got but in the shower. In my uh, panic last week of, oh, my God, I haven't been sick yeah. in so long. And, oh, my God, is this COVID? I, <laughs> I well, in my kind of like late night high brain um, ended up. We love it. Which we love. Uh, helps us feel better until uh, I found out that I have in the last week um, ordered eight at home COVID tests. <laughs> 
<laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I have a box of eight of them now sitting on my uh, dining room table because I forgot I ordered it from CVS and from Amazon, and they're mm-hmm. two to a box instead of one, which I originally thought. So now I collectively have eight, which is just fun. So like every night I can just take a little test and see. Well, yeah. Is up. there a shelf life? Now you just have them. It's like so. when Trump got into office and I ordered a bunch of Plan B. Yep. Exactly. I've never had to use it, but like it's nice to know it's there. Yeah, this uh, like the psychosomatic healing of knowing that those tests are waiting for me if I need them is is pretty pretty fun. Who knew? Well, speaking of getting stoned baloney yeah it is very weird to be in a state where it's not legal oh yeah that I is totally uh... forgot. i'm i was texting my friend huh. who i'm gonna who i was supposed to see today because i had tickets to a concert and it's rained out oh shit because ah, outdoors Shh. um so anyway i was texting your friend i was like by the way where can you give me some could you give me some weed <laughs> You've really returned to your younger self back in North Carolina. Really? And she calls me and she goes, we don't text the word weed here. <laughs> You're not in California, you fucking dumbass. I was like, oh, right. Oh. The feds. Oh. oh, God. I totally forgot. And so wow. I was like, I felt so bad. I was like, well, then we have to have a code word. Like in, <laughs> in L.A., you would text like bring a fat joint because I'm going to smoke it all. Like we don't That's think you, about yeah. that. Also, that's in how L- I talk. In LA, you also can go on your phone and have a stranger deliver it to your house in exchange for money, and everything is kosher with that. And as Chip always likes to say, and get a receipt. Yeah. <laughs> like we literally want a paper trail. I know. And I last time we ordered ease, I uh, tipped the guy on his Venmo that it's like, what a fucking privileged, spoiled state uh, California is for all of us. A this. spider web. In mm-hmm. addition to that, as I enjoy my G and T, yeah, I'm sure I, I'm sure I talked about this last year when I was here, but it truly is like jarring. Yeah. Is the liquor laws? Mm. You can only buy them from sanctioned ABC stores. Wow, there's a, cer- there's a certain store. It's not even like you got to go to a liquor store. There's one chain of stores. They mm. are not open on Sundays. Yeah, mm-hmm. because like. Drink all you want, Christians, just not on the Lord's Day. Not on the Lord's you know? Day. You're going to have to deal with your hangover that day. You're going to have to wait till Monday at 9 a.m. So wow. I just like hightailed it to the ABC store. So they don't even have like a at Costco or anything like that. It's only no. at ABC. And you know I love those fucking supermarket sweep yeah. inflatable size <laughs> bottles of Bombay Sapphire. Yeah, like truly, secret. I come out of Costco like I should rip it off, and it says I, I won two hundred dollars, two hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> it's the big bucks. I walk out of Costco, and they're like, "Look at that toddler carrying a fifth of Bombay." It's natural so big. selection. Wow, uh, it's so big. But no, so here you have to do that, and I was like, "Oh, right." There's there's a different level of shame when you have to go to just yeah. one store to buy liquor in the middle of the day on Tuesday wow. then like yeah I'm going to CVS I'm gonna get all my things and then put a little Tito's in my cart like right, right, it's right. just liquor you have to plan your debauchery a little bit more wow interesting yeah, I mean yesterday I had to drink beer <laughs> oh, oh god <laughs> no it's actually really fun Chip and I okay we got into this Airbnb we were in a different one a little outside of Asheville for okay. our first week here so got I've been it. in North Carolina just a little over a week mm-hmm. and so we were there and it was great and it was lovely but I realized like as soon as I got into Asheville I was like it was a little too peaceful for me Oh, too picturesque and lush and all yeah. of that. Well, you know, I'm like looking for houses and stuff here with my friend and that's yeah. where they love it. And now I have to have a come to Jesus moment to be like, <laughs> I, I need, I need yeah. variety. Yeah, I don't yeah, need yeah. one coffee shop, one bar. I need it. So we got here, but then there's a brewery like a block and a half away from us. And we went and did trivia last night. Oh, fun. Uh, mm-hmm. What was it themed in any way? It wasn't themed. I mean, it was different rounds. And so some we were better than others. There was like a general knowledge one. And then there was a, you know, a, rules for certain games. Like, we're going to tell you this rule. And then okay. you tell us what board game it is. And Oh, that's there was, fun. It was fun. The chip was like, I like this rule round. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, we're dorks. Yeah. <laughs> but then I guess every week, whoever the losing team is gets uh-huh. to pick a round the next week. Oh, to encourage people to come back. Wait, did you choose a team name? 
Oh, yeah. It's a sore subject. (laughs) No, it was just, I hate, it feels like so much pressure to choose a team name. Like, I don't know why. So I was like, we're at a brewery. So I named the team Lager. I barely know her. (laughs) Okay. You're the first person to laugh at that. Uh, But also. it's the delivery of it, I think, too. Well, thank you. It's like, I barely know her. And then, but she didn't deliver it like that. So she went through the scores and she said, Lager, I barely knew her. And I was like, that isn't. (laughs) That isn't selling this pun. <laughs> that is doing a disservice to our creativity. <laughs> the best team name was, I don't care, just choose something. <laughs> was the name of their team name. <laughs> okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> I like it. Um, but so there was that. There was like one where you had to find the theme. So like the first mm. answer was, oh, here. Oh, oh like the first uh, question was like, uh, the a band fronted by Anthony Kiedis. With the hit under the bridge, do do do. You're asking the wrong person about Red Hot Chili Peppers. Great. And the next one was like <laughs> Clockwork Orange, so it was Roy G. Biv. Like the theme was. Oh, okay, it, okay. It was really fun, but the round that the losers from the previous week picked was Harry Potter, and uh, I was like, you're... "Bitch, my boyfriend has a snitch tattooed on his leg." <laughs> See, it, if this was six years ago, <laughs> you would be furious that they picked Harry Potter, and now you're I like, know. "I got a ringer! I got a ringer!" <laughs> Truly, I. I was like, I am not going to know anything about this. But so we got most of those. The one we got tripped up on, though, hmm. which I found interesting. It was like, what is the name or like, who is the woman that greets you when you get to Hogwarts? Do you know? Oh, this? like McGonagall or whatever? Or no, I don't like the. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> is well, my answer. We got it wrong. Chip said something like lady in the painting. And then when they said the answer, the answer was just the fat lady. Oh, sure. I guess. That's I'm, I'm, rude. Everything <laughs> there is. That's where JK um, just kind of tapped out on her creativity. <laughs> Truly, I was like, look, we all know JK is problematic and terrible and transphobic, uh-huh. but like she was just calling people fat lady. Yeah. So there were some red flags about JK before we got to her transphobia. Right. Okay. Hagrid, Dobby, like all yeah. these made up names and being like, just. Uh, let's uh, let's just call her fat lady <laughs> so anyway <laughs> don't we didn't that. get that one i think we we placed probably around third or so but it was really fun fun do you win uh, any oh sorry that was wow. from yesterday that, that was is... the burp i'm Oof. sorry i'm <laughs> no, in beer it's, country it's okay it's been built <sighs> up i get it i'm sure we all have that summertime non-negotiable that thing that we surround ourselves with that just screams summer for some of you i'm sure this hits home it's wine. <laughs> Summer is all about hanging with your friends, drinking a nice chilled white wine, maybe a spritzer here and there if you fancy. And I got all the wine I need shipped to my door from First Leaf. So I have my summer go-to ready for any occasion. First Leaf, if you don't know, is a wine club that curates and ships boxes of wine that are perfect for you. And First Leaf gets better with each box. Every time you rate the wine you get, First Leaf learns more about your palate and can then deliver wine that you might not even realize you will love. They are helping you figure out the things that you could enjoy in ways in which you have never experienced before. First Leaf sends wine selections that are tailored to you're liking with a 98% accuracy. I swear they must have like psychics that work on the back end. It's just kind of bonkers how good they are at pairing your palate with wine that you will enjoy. It's too good. They're too good at predicting. I know I like white wine, but I didn't know exactly how to describe what I liked until I went on their website. And I actually kind of like, you know, answered some questions, uh, curated my palate. And then the wine that they sent me was actually stuff I would never try for myself necessarily. But now that I have, I have more of an understanding that I like a crisp, dry, white wine. Listen to me, I sound like a real housewife. <laughs> Whether you are by the water, grilling with your friends, or taking it easy at home, First Leaf is the perfect summer staple. Join today and you'll get six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash TMGW. That's six bottles of wine that you'll get for $29.95 and free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash TMGW. There's nothing, and I truly mean nothing, quite like that feeling of finally finding a perfect fitting bra. You guys, that is why Third Love creates high quality, 
so comfy. Underwear, sleepwear, and loungewear with cup sizes from AA through I, including exclusive half cups and lounge and sleepwear in sizes extra small to 3X. Everyone can look and feel good. Y'all, weight fluctuates. Sometimes a little bigger. Sometimes I'm a little smaller. You know what else changes? My The changes come, they go. <laughs> And sometimes I'm a different size one season than the next. Sometimes I'm not filling out that C, and other times I'm bursting out, which is why their half sizes are so great. You can take their fitting room quiz and figure out how your bra should fit. None of this just assuming that's your size, and then I, I'm, you know, busting out of that thing, or I'm barely filling it up and just looking real sad in that cup. So Third Love obsesses over every stitch, so you never have to think about how something feels, looks, or wears. They are seriously like the rocket scientists of comfort. And now they've got their new seamless collection, Form, for wireless bras and form-fitting undies with limitless stretch and endless comfort that disappears under your clothes. Look, I know VPL, visible panty line, was all the rage in the early 2000s, but we adults now, okay? We cannot have our little lines and our panties showing. Unless that's what you're into. And then, of course, uh, go for it. Third Loves know you deserve to be comfortable and confident 24-7. So right now, they're offering our listeners 20% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash TMGW now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 20% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash TMGW for 20% off today. Your boobs deserve it. Um, so you're finally in your, the place that you guys are staying now for a bit. We're here for a month. Cool. It's very cute. Yeah, how's I the knew decor? It, okay, I knew from the listing that uh-huh. I was going to be like very feminine. Like okay. lots of flowers, like everything is cream, like there's like mm. sconces, etc. Oh. Grace. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm living in a dollhouse. <laughs> really? Like you can't even see, like just right here. Like wow, that, yeah. Uh, there's uh, there's eight vintage 10 yeah. vintage mirrors right there. Wow. I mean like so I'm I have I'm on like a little vintage table. I moved into the bedroom to record. Yeah. In order to move this, uh-huh. I had to move a giant chalice of fake flowers, <laughs> a huge wooden like carved crucifix, and a birdcage wow. off a table that's like two square feet. This woman or whoever owns this place uh-huh. goes to Michael's frequently. You have no idea. <laughs> like the amount. And it's well done and it's yeah. cute and it's cozy and like it's also a really nice like rainy day house. Like yeah. it felt very like we're in the Victorian era. <laughs> like sure. I should have like an oil lamp. Yeah. But it but it's a lot. It's a yeah. lot. It does even just the shears behind you really set a, a mood. Oh, these old haunted things? Yeah. I was like, I don't wanna say that it looks like she's <laughs> <laughs> like uh she's at an estate sale right now but True, it's a state of something no but it's really comfy and it's really cute but it reminds me of like my mom was really into antiques when I was growing up and we mm. always had like until we got like real poor my my eighth grade year we always had like big old houses and my mom would have like big ass heavy furniture that yeah. like looking back I'm just like you've moved that trunk that weighs a ton <laughs> to several states like just let it go yeah just get something else but i remember and this is like a thing maybe in the south it's like we had one little bedside table that looked just like a little cube wooden Mm. bedside table but when you lift it up it was like an antique bedpan like (gasps) where people would piss in the table in the table like so it's at hip height already no you no you squat down Oh, okay. it was like a little like almost <laughs> stool. But I'm just like I grew up being like, that's a totally normal thing to decorate your house house with a to porcelain be, shitter. To be honest, like I'm trying to think of how you modernize that because I don't think it's a terrible idea. In hey, terms last of talking, week was mini fridges. This I week know. it's bedpans. <laughs> so I'm just like, how can we all I'm looking for basically is a studio apartment is what I'm describing. How can we yeah. put every room in <laughs> one room? <laughs> Or like maybe just get a tiny house. Yeah, I guess I just don't like walking down the hallway to do anything else. Right. Oh, speaking of walking, so then like they really went all out on this. Like, like every every lighting fixture is like a vintage shit, like a vintage wow. chandelier, etc. But there's one like the entrance or the the little like arched 
uh, yeah. pass through from the living room to the dining room. Yeah. I got to send you pics. I'm putting pics on Patreon. But uh, please, you walk through. It would be a normal <clears throat> just square entrance, mm-hmm. you know, where two where a wall is knocked down. But they put this like big wooden scalloped like ornate oh. thing on in both corners, like a like a wooden doily almost. OK. Chip has hit his head twice. <laughs> He has he has a bloody scab on his head. He did it in the middle of the night and then did it again. And I was like, this is not functional. That's dangerous. I know. I've heard. Um, Maybe we've talked about this before, that there is this like advent of cottage core as like an interior design scheme that it's this like, is cottage hardcore. Yeah. 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 That it's like uh, people are decorating. So it looks like little tiny doll houses. You know what I think this could also be a name because I like I could see like cottage core and like some people are very into like frilly shit. It's just mm-hmm. uh, you can any if someone not saw us for a, a first second, they'd know that's not what we're into. Yeah. We're both wearing our own merch with skulls and eyeballs on it. <laughs> I know. Um, but I feel like if someone cottage cores this hard, mm-hmm. it then switches over to cheesy. So I think this should be called yeah. cottage cheese. <gasps> oh see there you right? go this is We're why on to something we should have an hgtv show i'm screaming yes. it please i'm into it oh my god um oh i got attacked by a hummingbird the other day <laughs> tell me everything <laughs> it's not they, i've been story. screaming how scary they are forever they, that's like you know the animals in los angeles all over my next door app is that coyotes are like kind of stalking people in the streets right now which is are super you serious? fun yeah I, I was reading someone's post about it earlier oh um my God. But the animals feel even more aggressive. I think there's like a wave of humidity and there's like a tension in the air out here. Yeah. I, we have a hummingbird feeder that's so wonderful outside that they use it all the time. I went out there like two days ago because it was low to feed it. I put it off because it's like hanging on the side of our house. I took it off and I turned around and I just felt this swoosh in the <gasps> back of my head that this little hummingbird had dived down and like the uh, trimmed like, raised the you of, yeah and i looked up and it was just sitting in the little branch across from me like it was upset that i was taking it's like drug away from it just to fill it wow. up and come back out yeah so there um i think it was also too because the last time we put it out we might have put too much like sweet in there and so oh, i think you did like an we extra might, like you you're yeah. supposed to put out a mixed drink you put out martinis and now yeah. everyone's like that's where we go to get fucked up yeah i think i i think we're <sighs> creating this like rage uh hummingbird specimen now so <laughs> i'm gonna <laughs> track it and see how it does but yeah that was it was specific and targeted um yeah but it was but at the same time i felt very like seen and acknowledged so at least it was like okay. by the hummingbird yeah, that I was like, oh, all right. So you do like this thing uh, almost to the point that you're dependent on it now. Cool. Well, Grace, I feel like that's a little Stockholm syndrome. I feel like that's a little bit going like, you know what's weird? The people I deal drugs to are my friends. <laughs> Look, <laughs> no, I've been he isolated. just want that sugar water. I've been isolated for a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this I'm creating like, narratives. I felt <laughs> yeah. In episode two of me and Hummingbird's best friendship, uh, the hummingbird got upset with me for taking away its nectar. Oh, <laughs> we'll my see God. what happens in the season finale. I've been doing a lot of, uh, obviously, Chip has been playing disc golf, and yeah. it's just like beautiful in the woods, gorgeous hikes. Yeah. I know. I've seen so many turtles on your story. I saw two turtles on two different days in the woods. Like, I understand turtles live in the woods. I just associate like a turtle by a creek. Yeah, I always assume that they're just by water for some this reason. This turtle was on a hill eating a mushroom. <laughs> this other one was hauling ass. We were, oh. he was, he was already thrown through his disc. He was like going to get it. And yeah. I heard a little rustling and I was like, I swear to God, if, if any type of rodent comes out, <laughs> like it's over. And I look yeah. and a turtle just starts crossing the path. And I'm like, this guy is hauling ass. Wow. I just didn't realize like turtles just kind of go where they want. Yeah, I guess I just assume that I don't see many in motion. Uh, mm. So uh, wherever they're at, I assume that they were like born in that spot and they live <laughs> yeah, in that yeah, spot yeah. and they die in that spot. <laughs> Local turtles. Yeah. Uh, oh, another thing, though, since you were just talking about birds. Yeah. Is uh, we were out there and we heard a woodpecker going off. Mm. And I was just like, that's got to be the craziest bird. 
Yeah. What? I, what are, that's what they they peck into the tree to get food. Is that their to situation? To get worm. I think to get like grubs and worms or like any type of bug. But I'm still just like, <laughs> like really you. Like, you got a really short end of the evolution stick. Truly. It's like the thing you want is in the middle of a log, as Meanwhile, opposed to just getting it off a of soft soil. That's what I'm screaming. Meanwhile, every other animal that kind of looks like you is just sort of eating off the ground, but you're going, hey, no, no, I have to spend hours at this thing carving away. Yes. <laughs> I would be fucking pissed if I was just like, everyone here is just going to a buffet. It just rained. Just but my buffet. My- is in a bank vault. Yeah, and I have to bang my <laughs> head against it until Truly. I get it open. Did that you ever? Be... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just thinking about how that they are pretty stupid that way. That fu- it fucking sucks. Like I will say, it's kind of metal. Like you know, yeah. it is like they are the most metal. Well, there's crows. There's a lot of birds, but there's... I think they don't get enough respect for how hardcore they are. Yeah, now I want to look up like it, wh- Why? how do how do they mate? Like, is that part of their mating oh, ritual? I don't, oh, wow! Like, and also, like, how do they know when to headbang and when to not? <laughs> like, well, because also their entire their name is just two slangs for dick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wood pecker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so true. you know he's laying the pipe. <laughs> That's true. Wow! <laughs> only uh, only we could sexualize woodpeckers. Uh, I mean, I think other people probably have. Okay. There's, I mean, Woody Woodpecker, the cartoon, I remember. Did you ever see uh, Britney Spears do the impression of him? No. Britney Spears does an impression of Woody Woodpecker? That's a Mad Lib sentence. Okay, I know. And look, we are very much into the free Britney world and all of that jazz. But I remember forever ago, Britney Spears in her randomness and this is you know when she didn't control her own shit but yeah. she hold on i gotta hold on i gotta bring oh, this shit up this right now please. it's spot on it is spot the fuck on yes continue watching oh my god, oh my god. Okay. i'm really truly let me get excited. like through the <laughs> let me get through the probably ad hold on is there gonna be an ad don't you bring me no ads. Sorry, I know this is riveting. People no, listening this, to this podcast. Is this from her Instagram that she posted this? It was on her Instagram like forever ago. Like wow. but like 7 years ago or something. Oh, okay. You know okay. what? I'll find it. We can talk about something else, but wow. No worries. That sounds really incredible. And what a random impression <laughs> to one realize you can do. And yeah. then two tell the world. <laughs> She's an endless well of talent. She, they said, you know what? Bring her back on SNL. We're doing yep. only Woody the Woodpecker <laughs> themed. <Yeah. laughs> I would watch that episode of SNL, Britney Spears only doing Woody the Woodpecker in every single sketch. <laughs> it's the best. It's the absolute best. Oh, I can't find it. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, no worries. You got to look it up. Anyone listening needs to look it up. It's great. Please. Um, here's a random fact. Yeah. I realized today. Okay. Did you know Pilates Mm -hmm. was invented by a man named Joseph Pilates? That sounds like a joke you would make. It's not. I know. Because whenever I get like offended, if someone was like, if I was offended at Ikea, I'd be like, get Robert Ikea down here immediately. (laughs) You know, like that's what I do. Like I'm going to need to talk to Bill Costco. Uh, (laughs) But it was invented by a German man named Joseph Pilates. I'm looking at it now. Okay. Yeah. What is Pilates? <laughs> like, it's, it's better stretching. than yoga. I know. I've done it with you once, and I it was truly difficult to do. Yeah, and very intense. It it gives off the impression that like yoga, it's much easier to do than when you try to do it. So Pilates, you can do mat Pilates like yoga, in which you're mm-hmm. doing like sit ups and stretches, and it's just you and a mat and like maybe some like bands. Uh-huh. But then there's reformer Pilates, which sounds like you're going to boot camp, but it's a machine that has like straps and things. And so it's basically like, like resistance training, like you're building, you'll be doing like crunches, but you'll have to be pushing against weight. Ah, yeah. Or like leg lifts, but it's like restraint. You know what I mean? Yes. These, um, I love it. 
I I would like to get more into it because it does seem like it's yeah strength building but also stretching the yes. the questions that people ask in relationship to Joseph oh, I love Pilates those. why did Joseph Pilates die <laughs> not how why <gasps> um how not did, when or how just why <laughs> how much did Joseph Pilates weigh and how did Joseph Pilates lose his eye oh probably a hummingbird he uh, lost sight of his left eye, apparently due to bullies wielding stones at him at the age of Shut five. the fuck up. Yeah. This got dark really fast. But also his technique, Pilates, was originally called controlology, which makes sense. I mean, that sounds like a Janet Jackson tour. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yes, it does. <laughs> I mean, isn't this wild? I wish like I wish everything was just named just last named after things. You know what I mean? Like name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like who like was it Ricardo Tennis? You know, was it? (laughs) Yeah, I have no idea. (laughs) Was it Craig ABC that came up with the ABC store? (laughs) Oh, my God. I can't. Uh, It's so crazy. Okay, I was Um, just reading um, this article before that said uh this place in ohio is uh having this contest online to find america's best restroom and it's oh i know it got me thinking a lot about what makes a great restroom and it's narrowed it down to 10 finalists that it's like on its facebook or something asking like people to vote but businesses or homes businesses Okay. Like public restrooms. Mm-hmm. And one of the 10 finalists is JFK's airport terminal four. <laughs> Wait, what makes it so special? I have no idea. They've just listed the uh, the ones that they've narrowed it down to. I don't know how they've narrowed it down, but it's like core 24 GVL gym in Greenville, South Carolina. The wow. fancy flush portable toilet in Santa Rosa, California. I doubt uh, it's great. I know Nantai Fine portable. Dining in Atlanta, the Planet World Museum in Washington D.C., Pump House wow. in North Carolina, Canapolis. Okay, uh, I might have to go visit it. That might be a road trip. I know. Let me see how far it is. That'd be a nice follow up. Oh, Two Cities Pizza in Cincinnati, which we will be on tour, so maybe we should check. That out. I will take a dump there yeah. after I have that fucking sp- spaghetti with chili on it. I which, know. which shout out, a lot of people gave me suggestions of where they have the vegetarian chili. Oh hell yeah, the the skyline chili. Okay, interesting. See, like, what would be your? I Here's- would. Uh, yeah, I started to think about this because I'm like, I love this because I remember living in right. New York. One of the things was trying to make mental maps of where all the decent public restrooms were in the yeah, city. Barnes so and Noble, that, 14th Street. Or you go floor. to the Marriott in Times Square. You just walk up yep. to the second or third floor. Um, Absolutely. I'm thinking for me, initial ideas of what makes a great restroom are do- for women doors that shut without the like the crack, slit, the crack that you can see through. Um, and if, ones, if I see the crack, you can see my crack. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah. And ones that have the occupied or uh, vacant on the outside, I would appreciate yes. that. That would yes. be really nice. Uh, and I mean, general cleanliness. They're going, their criterion is like cleanliness and aesthetics are what they're You know what I do like? Hmm. I mean, this is pretty schmantz. Yeah. But occasionally... You'll go to like a restroom in a like a really nice department store on like the good side of town. Yeah, yeah. Or like, you know, the Glendale Galleria, like where where you would enter the condos, you know, yes. like between yes. escalators. Yes. And sometimes they'll have actual hand towels. Yes. That then you put in the hand towel bin mm-hmm. and it's like the trash, it's like the dirty laundry chute. And I'm yep. I, I go in there and I'm like who the fuck do I think I am? I know. Who do I tip for this <laughs> towel right now? This is incredible. Who was washing this? Like, how are you monetizing this? I would uh-huh. pay $3 to go to a restroom like that. Yeah. And also, sometimes they'll have a little product, but it's not like... Mm. I mean, I always feel bad when I go into a bathroom and there's a bathroom attendant and I legit don't have money. Yeah, exactly. You know, that feels terrible. But when there's a little bit of product, Mm -hmm. but no one like monitoring it. Yeah, I love that. I love love that. that. 
when you have yeah. all of your little like if there's a pile of tampons in case if there's yeah. like you know hand yes. sanitizer or a little something something yeah makeup wipe or whatever you need oh it's lovely a little something extra really does it. <laughs> when I worked at the recording studio, uh, when I first moved to New York, or like the first couple years on and off, yeah, like I remember, because I'd have to stock like all the snacks and all the shit, but the bathroom yeah. specifically had like different lotions, <clears throat> mm. like tampons, like individual Q-tips, like all this stuff. And it was something that this, you know, massive company probably spent 20 bucks on a week right. that Every single time, like, someone came in, like, it, con- one time, like, out of every five people, they'd be like, your bathroom's so nice. Yeah. And it was like, that's uh, just a little, like, just a free tampon. Totally. Changes the fucking game. Uh, that's, like, in, you know, Elliot and I are kind of planning this wedding situation <laughs> I now. love how casually you just sounded. Yeah. We're kind of planning kind this of planning. wedding situation well, instead of we're planning our wedding. We're planning our wedding. <laughs> and... <laughs> And thinking about all those little like nuances and I've been Mm. to weddings where you go into the bathroom, especially the women's room, and it's just every possible little thing you could have forgotten to put in your bag with you, like band-aids, hairspray. For uh, when you're like dancing and you get a blister. Total, like literally it's a tiny CVS in the bathroom and I always think that's the greatest like, you know, consideration for everyone. Two things. Yeah. One, you should get uh, I was going somewhere with Jacqueline, our friend, yeah. re- recently, like to dinner a few months ago. And on my way to pick her up, I was like, please bring deodorant. I just mm-hmm. realized I left the house and I stink. Yeah. And she brought out like individual deodorant <gasps> wipes. Oh, smart. Because you don't, because like using someone's deodorant is intimate. Like I would do that yeah. with you and with like a few other <laughs> yeah. friends. Yeah, but like yeah. you're basically being like, hey, do you want to borrow this thing? I rub on my stinky thing for you to rub <laughs> yeah. on your stinky thing. <laughs> like, it's a very int- intimate <laughs> product. I never thought about that. Yeah, that it's basically like giving someone a <laughs> tissue that they yeah. dirty and give back to you. And you're like, it, to use it, it truly reminds me of the term, which is so gross <gasps> bumping uglies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're like bumping stinkies. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you gotta rub it in there. You can't, unless you right? gotta spray, I guess. But like, would it be offensive if like you handed me your deodorant and I took a. Kleenex and wiped, wiped off the whole exterior <laughs> and then did it. I mean, like it's a whole, it's an intimate thing. But yeah. so the individual wipes is great. The next thing I would say is mm. weddings are expensive, so I'm not trying to add on costs. However, a pimp fucking move, yeah, would be if you had like let's say the restroom like had a little space, you know, like yeah. some like I'm talking about like the Nordstroms once. It's like yeah. there is a little sitting room, yeah, yeah. chaise lounge, you know, like mirror situation. Yeah, when you're just waiting for your girlfriend. Uh huh. If you had a hair and makeup person for touch ups. <laughs> Whoa, that's a bit much. But <laughs> that's too yes. much. So it'd be like, why are all the women at this wedding in the bathroom? Yeah, but if you went in there mine. and they were just like, Oh god, I'm sweaty. And it's like, let me powder you down, hon. You want a little lip? I'll just instead, I'll just have someone I'm, that sits there that puts on fake tattoos and braids people's hair if they yes. want it. Okay, the, that's better. That's better. Or maybe have someone in there that does special effects makeup yeah, and yeah, come yeah, out yeah. and be like, I lost my fucking tooth. <laughs> that, oh, those yeah. spring rolls were too hard. Yeah. <laughs> in the men's room and the women's room, it's just someone with a basket of prosthetics just yeah, waiting. To there's, just a guy, there's just a guy and a girl in each bathroom with like a trench coat like, you want to pull a prank? <laughs> I know. Then my mom comes out and she's like, my <laughs> eye fell out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, exactly. It really is my special day. Listen up, y'all. The world might be opening back up again, but that doesn't undo the time that we all just spent locked in our houses with absolutely nothing to do. And you probably got pretty bored. You probably need some stuff to spice up your life again. You've probably been looking at your partner for months and months on end and what? I would consider this a a delicious meal because you need to add some spice to your bedroom. I'm not talking about fancy sheets or bougie pillows or candles or, or, uh, you know, uh, cool lamps. No, I'm talking about lingerie, toys, games, movies, and more from the best in upscale adult boutiques. I am talking about none other than Adam and Eve. 
So if you're ready to bring a little excitement back into your life, head on over to adamandeve.com and use the code TMGW at checkout. And you're going to get almost any one item for 50 percent off y'all but the fun doesn't have to end there because adam and eve loads on the free stuff enter code tmgw at checkout and get 10 free gifts what i'm sorry sexy santa that's a sexy item for you a special gift for your partner a third item for that friend who always expects you to show up with a gift and they're also gonna throw in six free spicy movies plus shipping that's offer code tmgw T. M-G-W at checkout at adamandeve.com for 50% off almost any one item and 10 free gifts. You guys, come on. Olive and June is changing the nail polish game so much, you could say they're nailing it. Nailed it. Seriously, no one is doing it like Olive and June. Their Manny system is like having your own nail salon at home. It comes with all the tools that you need in one box, including the poppy. Their patented brush handle that makes it so easy to paint with both hands it's really cool it's like this flat disc that you put on top of the brush handle and it just stabilizes everything because you know me and Mamrie that if we try to paint our nails it looks like a drunk toddler you know just tried to get artistic (laughs) they do not look professionally done but with this poppy assistant stick thing that i can't get enough of i actually have painted my toes and they look professionally done plus their polishes last at least seven days and do not chip no matter what the wacky stuff uh, that you get up to does to your feet and it's affordable if you get the mani system with six polishes each manicure is just two dollars i actually um have tried a bunch of their nail polishes and the color that I currently have on my toes is called aw so that's cute it's like this beautiful gray color and truly I put it on weeks ago it looks exactly like the day I put it on it's wild and now you don't even have to go to a salon to get a perfect manicure you can do it all from home with Olive and June visit oliveandjune.com slash tmgw and use code tmgw for 20% off your first Manny system this is an exclusive offer you can only get here that's oliveandjune.com O-L-I-V-E-A-N D G A U N E dot com slash T M G W code T M G W for twenty percent off your first Manny system Olive and June dot com slash T M G W code T M G W. Oh, okay. Them. Here we go. Britney yeah. Spears's Woody Woodpecker impression. You oh, ready? okay. I found it. Oh, oh come my God. God. Go. Okay. Go back. <laughs> go back. Hold on. Here we go. Luckily, they're not running ads on this ten second video oh great this is my impression of a woody woodpecker <laughs> two things I, okay i kind of heard it and it's going to do it again one more time oh hold on god damn it <laughs> listen to this real quick is that an elevator I edited a video to try to encourage people to vote on my Instagram last summer about yeah. the notebook. And I had to download yes. the theme to the notebook. Yes. It's by Aaron Zygman. It's called On the Lake. It's the, the theme from the notebook. Yeah. Something is happening with my phone every time I plug in my phone in my car. That's what starts bumping. <laughs> I'm so fucking sick of this song Wait, didn't you you used to have that with like salt and pepper or something like it switches free. like all of a sudden i'm like why is this the song you think i want to hear when i get in the car the the, the instrumental theme to the notebook oh my okay. god all right i'm gonna pull up woody woodpecker again this is my impression of a woody woodpecker got it <laughs> two things oh my god one that's hilarious that's a Two, good impression i love that she says a woody woodpecker yes i, I caught that yeah 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 <laughs> that they're a species and it's not a cartoon character like I, it's like seeing a bunny and being like oh look at that bugs bunny that's a that's a bugs bunny that I mean, we love her. We love her. <laughs> Truly, that's incredible. That's a really good impression. I it's pretty didn't, good. I didn't think you'd be that great. Uh, and no. I stand impressed. Wow. I remember oh, last week or maybe it was the week before I said something about Muttley, the dog that's like, 
Yeah. And I got lots of tweets that were like, that was dead on. Yeah. yeah no, I was like, thank God that was dead on. Because that just sounded like. And the Zima. Oh yeah. And she is. In oh, my God. Oh, cigarettes. speaking of voiceovers and animals. How's mm. like the response to Yoki Bin Jellystone? Oh, it's great. I have no. I mean, the response has been awesome. Uh, people seem to like it. It's actually uh, Elliot told me he saw that it's moving to Cartoon Network. Um, Ooh, so okay. I don't know. In addition to it being on HBO Max, I guess they're putting it on Cartoon Network too, which to me feels great. It's obviously where people like cartoons, so I hope it continues to do well there. It's. Grace, I mean, it's so fun. Have you even let your mind? wander hmm. and think about the possibility that if this show that she gets her own spinoff i would love no. for cindy bear to have her own spinoff <laughs> well of course that's always the dream that's yeah. all we could ask for is a spinoff uh -huh. that you could go to a theme park oh. and there could be a sweaty fucking teenager in uh. a cindy bear costume that you take a photo with that or that you see little kids take photos with I mean, my fragile grip on reality needs that because <laughs> it's I would I mean, that is the bummer that um, Comic-Con didn't happen in person this year because yeah. I was really looking forward to be able to go on behalf of this show. Yeah, but and now like, you can go next year when yeah. like people know what the fuck the show is. And it's yeah. not like here's the the actors from the show that's coming out or it's yeah. been out for like two weeks. It's been really cool. It's very surreal. Like my niece has heard it and she loves it, but it's like hard to process that like, you know, it's a character and also my voice. Right. Um but the exciting thing, like I really hope it gets more episodes because now that I've heard it and I mm -hmm. hear all the other voice actors, I'm like I want to make this character even better. Like now yeah. I'm hearing the energy. I'm hearing the tone of everyone. I'm seeing what the animation style looks like. And like I get right. the full universe now. So I'm just hoping. But who knows? It's also just wild. You know, you know, with Tiny Food Fight, which is coming mm -hmm. back. Hooray. Uh, September 13th, baby. But that like, you know, it's a, uh, a project that you're just kind of like a, a, a talent in. Yeah. So you really don't know what's going on. We're, we've been so like privileged to be able to, you know, be at the helm of so much of our creative projects that now to just be someone mm -hmm. that just kind of hears through the grapevine what's going on and hopes that it's doing well. It's totally. an interesting position to be in, but it's I'm glad people like it. That's the thing. Good. I was worried that people would be like, you ruined Hanna-Barbera for all of us. Oh, but please. I think it's great. Uh, everyone in it is so good. It's so we fun. might have ruined hannah's before but yes. not barbara just kidding <laughs> we love you Hannah. <laughs> jk jk um what's so funny is that i don't know if you remember last year but i went to when i was here i went to like a campground for two nights with my mm. niece and my sister my nephew and my mom and so yogi bear yeah. has like a series of campgrounds and ca cabin yes. rentals like Yes, and because so, when I first started looking up Jellystone on yes. Twitter, that's what comes up are those campgrounds. Yeah. So there's like three. And basically, it's like any normal campground, except you don't really camp. You like you essentially rent like cabins that yeah. look like like tiny homes that look like cabins. Like you're yeah. renting like a trailer. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's all these activities. And then like once a day, Yogi Bear comes oh. and takes pictures and then like oh. leaves on a golf cart. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so last year was funny because my nephew was like, that Yogi Bear, there's a there's a young lady in there because she's been giving me the eye. I'm like, the eyes don't even move. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> Do so you mean anyway. like, like flirting or like yeah. evil eye? Like flirting. I was like, wow, uh, my confidence carries to the next generation. Yeah. Uh, when you think <laughs> when you think the Yogi Bear must be a teenage girl who's checking you out. Yeah, like, they don't. The eyes don't even move. Wow. Um, but anyway, so my niece went last year and she loved it so much. and We had such a good time that now she just says, I want to go see Mame at Yogi's. Mm. So like she thinks I'm like buds with Yogi Bear. So That's now great. I have to make sure she's watching the show. So now yeah. she like tr so now I can truly fuck with her reality to be like, yeah, dude, I live in Yogi Bear land. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, this is the time to start implanting seeds of mm -hmm. complete irrational nonsense. <laughs> yeah. So later they're like, oh, maybe, okay, maybe my aunt didn't live. Yeah. I also <laughs> forgot Smoky Mountains. that like Yogi Bear's whole shtick is just eating constantly. I mean, same. And so I know. And so like the first, <laughs> the first two episodes 
of Jellystone deal with that. Like they call it out right away. But then I learned from the internet that oh no. they is it problematic? No, it's not because I don't think it was created <laughs> with this in mind. But the internet, of course, kind of ruins everything all the time a little bit. Yeah, they call it vor, which is like the fetish of like eating other people <laughs> or things. Yeah, Wait, I, like cannibalism? No, it's like a, or like toenails. It's like a, <laughs> I looked it up for like a second, and then I was like, I don't want to look this up. Yeah, well, that's like what's his face, that actor who just got canceled, who was like disgusting. Yeah, yeah, no, I think uh, it's erotic desire, or sexual fantasy to be consumed or to consume another. Oh wait, but so I are don't people think, horny for Yogi? Uh, no, they people are just calling out that the oh the first two episodes of Yogi Bear are vor storylines, but I don't a think vor that's line? a vor lines. But it's a uh, that's just his old shtick. Uh, Urban Dictionary now just gave it a fun, uncomfortable twist as mm. it does with everything. Mm-hmm. You should start a thing because you know he always steals people's picnics, right? That's yeah, like picnic baskets. You should be like, send me your your pick pick, like instead of dick pick. Oh, that's like good. Like you want pictures of people's picnic. Yeah, that's good. I don't know. We'll don't workshop I mean, it. hire we'll me for marketing it. if you want to. <laughs> I'm not doing a lot. Um, <laughs> here's one little tiny random thing. Okay, so you know how you and I will go into our messages on Instagram to like see people like putting on merch, buying tickets, yes. like things like that for us to redo. Yeah. So when you go into it, it has top like the top of your inbox of people you don't follow. That's like people who are verified, et cetera, yeah, yeah. or all requests, which is just like in yeah. chronologically in real time. So today I went and looked and I like, for some reason just stopped on just all requests. And it's, uh-huh. it's people, it's like fashion Nova being like, Hey babe, love your style. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Do you yeah. want some <laughs> strings to wear? Um, <laughs> here's, some, here's some shiny floss. Put it between your like a tiny golf pole flag to wear as a bandeau top. You're like, yeah. it's the worst. This isn't a sock. Um, this is a jumpsuit. <laughs> Truly. Uh-huh. They'd be like, that's not a pasty. That's an entire cocktail dress. Um, but so I was <laughs> yeah. looking and one of them I saw, I clicked on it and it was, okay, I, you and I watched that like Generation Hustle scam and mm, I don't think she was mm-hmm. one of these, but do you know who Caroline Calloway is? I know that name. Why do I know that name? She I think was I like looked this up. She was like a big scammer. Yes, yes, who because was like she also an started influencer scammer. Yes, and she started some new product line where she's like hand making oils or something, and everyone is like, "This is yes. bullshit." <laughs> Being like, "I'm gonna send you my like." It's just like Miracle moon, water. Like moon juice oil that she's calling yes. like something similar to what they do on Goop, but she's like hand bottling snake oil. Yes. Yeah. And she's hand bottling them herself from her home in Brooklyn and she's charging ninety five dollars a bottle. Yes, and she's like, the packaging will be better when I when there's more orders. <laughs> and like, it just looks like masking tape on a dirty bottle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, like, I don't know who follows you. Whatever. But so she's like to me an OG when we lived in Brooklyn, like I don't scammer. remember. Okay, I only remember I only like weeks ago looking up stuff to talk about for the podcast yeah. stumbled on a buzzfeed article about her and mm-hmm. so i don't remember her from before oh i remember when it came out and i think i'm just like i've always been very um i've always had my ears up about yeah. scammers like pretty young female yeah. scammers in new york because i got grifted once mm-hmm. only for a weekend yeah. but i'm always being like i hope that bitch gets caught uh, but so anyway, so Caroline Calloway, so I look and I was like, wow, why is she in my inbox? And I click and it was the thing that sucks. It was from two fucking years ago. That's how wow. often I look, but it was at the top because like, I don't get like verified people DMing me. I don't follow. Yeah. And it, and it was one of those mentioned you in her story, but I can't see what the mention was because oh. it was fucking two years ago. So I'm like, shit. was this a positive thing? Did you just like repost something of mine? Are you oh. talking shit about me? I have no idea. It could I be think, all of the above. Here's what I'm saying is hmm. I think if someone mentions you in their story and yeah. you don't follow them, you should still be able to see it after 24 hours. Yeah. It's a mind fuck. Send it to the gram, which, by the way, my gram's working again. It just popped oh God, back yay. on for some reason. Yeah, which feels also kind of weird that I'm like, oh, right, now I have this again. You're uh, like, shit, I was being so productive. Yeah, exactly. I was getting used to not having it, and now I have it. I was uh, living just for the live of it. <laughs> I 
agree that it should be that you mm -hmm. should be able to at least see like once and then it goes away or whatever it is Thank um you. i'm so fascinated by what that was two years ago what did we talk about that? her two years ago on this podcast maybe did i offend her did she literally just retweet something of my or like regram something and give me Oof. credit was Oof. she oh what's happening well i guess we'll find out i don't know um I, now I'm a little wow. nervous. I'm a little nervous to invite this energy into this. Me point. too. Do I follow her and see if it sparks something? I oh, mean, I mean, it was two years ago. Who knows? She <laughs> might, I mean, that might have been a totally different person. Who knows? It's true. I don't know it's true. how many times she's changed her identity since then. Crazy. Um, also, yeah, what a wild um, legacy to have. <laughs> you're con it's like you're the least trustworthy person of all time and you're in your well, mid-20s and now i'm making snake oil from home please buy it it's so you know wild. what i have to say to that you know what i gotta say to that grace huh. <laughs> that really i'm good. losing it i'm that was losing really good. it well you know you. um people can actually in a month's time oh watch us lose it in real life on oh, stage yeah. Watch our brains completely atrophy in a mere hour and 15 minutes. <clears throat> Grace and I were talking about what the show is going to be before we hit record on this. And we are yeah. so goddamn excited. Yeah, we are. Um, we have so many dates. Uh, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm looking at our uh, website right now going, oh, wow. Yeah, that's, more, that's a lot of shows right there, isn't it? <laughs> Well, we have all the dates we've already told you about and you heard about at the top mm -hmm. of the show. But in addition to that, we have confirmed a few more dates, which we're really excited about. And so yes. this is like the excuse <clears throat> right now of announcing Ooh. them. And, and these are also the last shows we're adding. Yes. Yes. We can't yes, be touring yes. all year. No, 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 no. Our we body, got shit our, to do. Our old people bodies, I don't think, can actually handle it. <laughs> they won't. They won't do it. Let me I'm looking up the dates. I didn't have it at the ready. Um, so here is what else we have got going on. So in addition to all the dates you've already heard about, and y'all get your fucking tickets, uh, yeah. Portland, Seattle, Denver, we're literally going to be in you in like three weeks time. So let's yes. roll. But in addition to that, we have a couple of shows at the top of 2022. Ah! We have got Boston on January 12th, <gasps> New York City on January 14th. And Philadelphia on January 15th. Woo! Woo! Those were, you know, the areas that most of you were asking, why weren't we going to? And it was because yeah. we are trying to book You're some dates. Um, I think a couple of those venues actually tweeted out that our shows will uh, mm -hmm. be on sale. I think this Friday, those tickets cool. might go on sale. Um, but also all of the other dates that we have, you guys can go to this make it weird .com and all the links to the show tickets are right there for you. Also, if you're having any nerves about all the craziness in the world, we are currently in the process yeah. of securing proof of vaccination for the shows because we don't want it either. No, I have eight tests at home, <laughs> but that doesn't mean I want any of them yeah. to be positive. We want to make you laugh, but not yeah. full of droplets coming at us. Yeah, so. and we'll, <laughs> we'll be figuring out like the uh, the safest precautions because yeah, we don't we don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable. Most importantly, ourselves. So thank you very much, or th that we already make ourselves. So if yeah. you haven't got your tickets, get your freaking tickets, man! It's gonna yeah. be super duper fun. And um and it's not it's not a con. <laughs> no, it's it's real. We won't take your money and run, but uh -uh. you might ask for a refund. Yeah. This got weird. Woo woo.